Hello everyone. Welcome to Go VM Lab NSXT for Beginners lecture series. In this lecture, we are going to learn about how do we go and configure rule-based access control within our NSXT environment. Now, why do we need rule-based access control? With rule-based access control, we can restrict system access to authorized users. Users are assigned roles and each role has a specific set of permissions. In this lab exercise, we are going to create two different users network admin users and the security admin users and we'll see that how could we assign network specific permissions to our network users and security specific permissions to our security users. So with that, let's get started. As you could see that this is our NSXT manager. So let's log into our NSXT manager with the NSX admin user credentials. So give a username as NSX hyphen admin at the rate of corp dot local and give a password of our NSX admin user. Click here to log in. And as you could see that we are successfully logged into our NSXT manager UI and that's a default overview dashboard of our NSXT manager. Now to manage system users and assigning roles and permissions, we need to navigate through a system option of our NSXT manager. So click on system under settings. We have a users and role option. So click on users and roles. And that's where you do see that you will find bunch of options, user role assignment, local users, roles, LDAP and VMware identity manager. Now let's see that what kind of roles are already present in this infrastructure. As you could see that there are a bunch of predefined roles which are already presented in our NSXT environment. For example, the first one is auditor that would be read only user. Then we have enterprise admin, guest introspection partner admin. Then we have a load balancer admin. If you want to specify load balancer specific permissions, then there's a load balancer operator, NetX partner admin. Then that's where we have a network admin. If you do see that there is a predefined role for network operator, security admin, security operator. And the last what we have it is the VPN admin. So you could see that there are already bunch of predefined roles are already present in our NSXT environment and if you expand this particular role you will find that what kind of permissions this user will be getting it for example if you look at the vpn admin the vpn admin will have a mixed networking permissions will have a mixed security permissions but on the inventory side it will only have a read only permissions but it will have a troubleshooting and the system will also have a mixed kind of permissions similarly if you look at the read only user you will find that the auditor user is just a read only user. If you do see that auditor user will have all the permissions are marked as read only because that's a read only user. Similarly, let's look at the network admin and let's see that what kind of permissions network admin user get it and look at that. The network admin will have a mixed permission for networking inventory and system. It will have all these permissions as a mixed permission for networking inventory and system. But look at that. From the security perspective, it would be only read only user. Whereas troubleshooting, obviously we want to troubleshoot issues. That's where the troubleshooting tools, it will have a full access. Let's look at the security admin. If you look at the security admin, look at that. Security admin will have full access to all the security specific services, but for the networking inventory system and troubleshooting, it will have a mixed set of permissions. So that gives us a pretty good information about the roles and what kind of permissions are being assigned to each of these roles. As we discussed in this lab exercise, we are going to create two different users, network admin and the security admin users, and we are going to assign networking role and security role what we have just discussed. Before we go and assign these network admin and security admin roles to our respective users, let me just show you that how do we go and integrate Active Directory to our NSXT manager. So for that, just click on LDAP. Once you click on LDAP, that's where you find option called add identity source. So maximum three identity source can be added in our NSXT manager. Now, if you do see that there is already one identity source is already been added to our NSXT manager and that type of identity source is active directory over LDAP. So active directory over LDAP is already been added as an identity source to our NSXT manager. Now let's get more detail about it. So the name is corp.local the domain name is corp.local and that's what information about LDAP servers so if you click on that LDAP servers you will find more information about 
that server so that's a control center dot corp dot local the protocol is LDAP the well-defined port is 389 now if you click here you will find the base DN information DC equal to corp DC equal to local and you can also define alternative domain names so that's what identity source configurations are all about it now if you want to add a new identity source it's pretty straightforward to do it click on add identity source now once you click on add identity source you need to give the name of that source let's say test you need to give entire fqdn test.local then you have an option either you can integrate active directory over ldap or you can also integrate open ldap so open ldap is also supported then you have to define the LDAP server. Then you can define your base DN and description information. Alternative domain names can also be defined it here. And that's how once you click on save, that new identity source will be added to your NSXT manager. So as you could see that it's pretty easy to add any of the identity source, either Active Directory over LDAP or Open LDAP. Both of these identity source can be added to our NSXT manager. Now, if you want to validate the connectivity status, then just click on check status and you will see that the connection status is successful which means that our active directory is reachable to our nsxt manager and we have a pretty good connectivity between these two endpoints now since we have successfully integrated our active directory over ldap let's go and see that how could we assign nsx network roles and permissions to our active directory user now before we go and do this role assignment let me quickly walk you through our active directory so if as you could see that we are logged into our active directory and we are at the users section of our active directory and if you scroll down and that's where we have two users created nsx network admin and nsx security admin so these are the two user which are already there in our active directory configurations now because we have successfully integrated active directory as an identity source to our nsxt manager so we're gonna use these users and we are going to assign nsx roles or permissions to these network and security admin users so now let's go back to our nsxt manager and let's assign permissions to these users how do we go and assign permissions to these users that's where we have an option called user role assignment so click on user role assignment and that's where you do see that we have a bunch of users are already created here for example we have an admin user audit user guest user we have nsx admin user the user what we have been using it and if you do see that currently we have logged in with nsx admin user and the role of that user is enterprise admin if you do see that this particular user is ldap user which means that nsx admin user is also part of our active directory user so let me quickly show you that so let's go back to our active directory and we'll see that there is an nsx admin user right so if you do see that this is our nsx admin user through which we have currently logged into our nsxt manager and if you look at the permissions this user is having an enterprise admin level permissions so now let's go back to our nsxt manager and now let's add two more new users and let's do the role assignment so how do we go and do the role assignment click on add now what role we are going to select it because we have added active directory over ldap so we are going to choose option as role assignment over ldap so click on role assignment over ldap and if you do see that it has automatically detected that domain which is a corp.local so that's the domain what we have added so that looks pretty good select that domain now let's give a username so username is going to be nsx hyphen network hyphen admin and look at that it has fetched that nsx network admin user which is a part of our active directory configurations so select that user nsx network admin and now we need to assign the roles to that user and that's where let's go and select the role and we are going to assign role as network admin so if you do see that that's where we have a predefined role network admin so select that network admin role and click on save and look at that if you do see that we have successfully created a new user nsx network admin at the rate of corp.local that user is having a network admin permissions and that is a ldap user now let's go and add one more user which is going to be a security user so that's where we are going to select role assignment for ldap so click on role assignment for ldap select the domain as corp.local search for user as nsx hyphen 
security-admin and look at that. It has pre-populated that user. So select NSX security admin and now let's assign the security rule to it. And that's where we have security admin rule. So that's where we have a security admin rule. So select that rule, click on save and look at that. We have successfully created another user name as NSX security admin at the rate of corp.local. The roles assigned to this user is security admin and it is also LDAP user. As you could see that we have successfully created two different users with a different set of permissions and these two users are LDAP user. So now let's log out from our NSX admin user. Let's log in with the NSX network admin user credentials and let's see that what kind of operation this network admin user can do it. So how do we go and do that? So click here to log out. Now let's log in with the NSX network user. The username is NSX hyphen network hyphen admin at the rate of corp.local. Let's give a password of NSX network admin user. Click here to log in. And as you could see that we are successfully logged into our NSX team manager UI and that's a default overview dashboard of our NSX team manager. Now if you do see that now we are logged in with the username NSX network admin. So now this is our NSX network admin user and, and this user only have a network specific roles and permissions. So now let's go and validate what all the things this user can do it. So click on the networking, click on tier zero gateways. And if you do see that it has an option to go and add more tier zero gateways. So if I click here, I can click on tier zero and you do see that I can go and create a new tier zero gateway. That's absolutely fine. Can I go and modify the existing tier zero configuration? Yes, click on add it. And if you do see that if I want, I can go and make changes to this configurations as well. Let's close this wizard. Now let's click on segments. If you click on segment, you do see that as a network user, it has access to creating more number of segments. As you could see that we can go and create a new segment. For example, let's say test. Click on save. And you do see that the segment test is successfully created. So now our network user has successfully created a new segment as well. Similarly, click on tier one gateways. And if you do see that he also has a access to our tier one gateway creation. So it can do all the networking specific operation, whatever is required for a network admin. Click on DNS, add DNS service. You do see that it can go and configure DNS service as well. Click on IP address pool. If you want to add new IP address pool, as you could see that as a network admin, it can go and do all the networking specific configurations, which is expected. Now, what about security? Can he go and make changes to the security configurations? Let's check it out. So that's our security view. Click on distributed firewall and look at that. Everything is grayed out. He doesn't have permission to go and create new policy or adding a new rule because that requires security specific permissions and this is not our security admin. Let's look at the distributed IDS. Click on get started and look at that. Can he go and enable those things? It cannot do that. Look at that. It doesn't he doesn't have permission to go and enable IDS and IPS services. Click on gateway firewall. Look at that. He cannot go and make any changes to the gateway firewall configurations. All this policy creation rule creation is grayed out for this particular user. So now this clearly tells us that as a network admin, this particular user only have a network specific operations accessibility, but it cannot do anything security specific operations and that's well expected. Now let's log into our net NSX network admin user and now let's log in to our security user and let's see that what all the things security admin can do. Let's log in with our NSX security user. So NSX security admin at the rate of corp.local give a password of our security user click here to log in as you could see that we are successfully logged into our NSXT manager UI and that's a default overview dashboard. Now if you do see that currently we are logged in with the NSX security admin user. So now let's go and check out the security configuration of this user. So click on security click on distributed firewall and look at that this user has accessibility to create new policies. So click on add policy 
and you do see that this user has accessibility to create new policy so we are creating a new policy click here to publish and look at that a new policy has been successfully created now if you want to add a new rule you do see that this user can go and add a new rule within that policy which means that this security admin has accessibility to all those security specific configurations if you want to delete it it can select that policy click on delete and you do see that it can also not only create but also can delete those policies or firewall rules as you rightly see it here click on gateway firewall and as you do see that on the gateway firewall also this user has permission to create new policies so as you could see that it can go and create a new policy within that policy it can actually go and create a new rule as well as you do see that this user has all the permissions to do all the security related operations similarly if you click on url analysis you will find that okay i want to cancel that thing click on get started and you do see that it has permissions to enable the url analysis as well as you rightly see it here so now that's what all about the security configurations now let's check out the network configurations can this security admin perform the network related operations so for that let's go back to segments and look at that the segment option is grayed out for this security users which means that this security user doesn't have permission to create new segments let's click on tier 1 gateways look at that the tier 1 gateway option is grayed out for this user click on tier 0 gateways look at that the tier 0 gateway permissions are also grayed out for this security users click on ip address pools and look at that the ip address pool option is also grayed out for the security user so this clearly tells us that security user can only perform security related operations and network admin can only perform network related operations so this conclude our lecture on role based access control in our nsx environment where we have learned that with role based access control how could we go and restrict system access to authorized users and users are assigned rules and each rules has a specific set of permissions we hope you enjoyed this lecture thank you